I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, and we are going to go into a steep garden that is unlike any garden in the world. I'm not exaggerating. It sits on a cliff top overlooking the San Diego River Valley. And Jim has been cultivating this, putting in terraces, dealing with gophers that undermine everything, and partner Scott has been his Sherpa, blocks and brick and dirt and plants. plants and There's well over 300 steps in the garden. The sunniest and warmest spot is at the very, very bottom of the garden because it's out of the fog belt and it also doesn't have the, the shade from the north slope of the hill. And in between is a lot of native chaparral, like a half acre of it. And I planted all this from one gallon. Wow, this is an amazing album. Yeah, it's got over 300 blooms. Never been able to get the name. Somebody gave me, I saw one in a photo from South Africa. It's obviously got um, arborescence in it, but I don't know what the other parents are. Jim, tell us about the bottles that you've used for the retaining walls. We had a New Year's Eve party here in 1998, and I saved the uh, bottles and it's not in this picture but up there is the very first bottle wall I did and people saw that and they started bringing me bottles but I use them for retaining walls they, you know, when you use the blocks some of those weigh 60 pounds each and they're about five stories below the house so you can only carry a few of those at a time and it really wears you out but you can always carry when you come down the hill every day a handful of bottles when it's wet like right now you can take a rubber mallet and drive them in though I do hunt for rocks ahead of time the hill is all rocks and speaking of which, the dry creek bed here and all the rocks you see are off the property. When you dig a hole, you get a bucket of rocks. I couldn't figure out what to do with all the red tile left over when we put in solar. So. It's supposed to be chrysanthemums, but it has more of a starry night appeal. Mm. It does. Mm -hmm. We keep running out of red tile. So this red flowered shrub is the reason we have hummingbirds that's over winter in San Diego because that is everywhere in our chaparral. It's Rebis californica or our native gooseberry and, and they bloom in the middle of the winter and they're red and it draws hummingbirds from everywhere and it totally defoliates in the, in the summer, no leaves at all and it's just a mass of thorns. It's the largest guest area there is so if you do giant guest area this is it. Gopher got in there, I didn't know gophers ate those, that made a pup more. And beautifully in bloom. How many gophers do you think you pulled out of them? I get five a month sometimes. Because okay. I'm on a, I've got two canyons on either side of me. There's a hundred foot canyon that way. I'm on a point, and there's a hundred foot canyon that way, and they're natural. I have owls, and there's also hawks. There's four hawks in the neighborhood. They're not a big gopher eater, but the uh, owls are. And I know the owls are back because I can tell from the droppings under the torii pine. They, that means they're, you know, they sit in the pond, they sit there and, and wait. I hear hummingbirds too. Yeah, I just saw one go by. These are dickias. These are definitely dickias. Yeah. I think this is chocolate. Some Beautiful. People... And when they bloom, those orange flowers. And this is lemon fizz sanolina, which I hope turns back to the yellow in the summer. The new um, oh. yeah. So much eucalyptus drop here yeah. that I use it for mulch and I can't keep up with the leaves. They, these defoliated twice last year. Oh. These are gabions and yeah. uh, rock came off the property and there's uh, sorted um, junk hidden in the middle. That's what you do when you build gabions. You can take all the concrete or anything that doesn't decompose and bury it in the middle. And all these rocks rolled down the hill over 60 years. Kathy and Scott and I moved in one bucket at a time up here. We figured it was around seven tons of rocks that we moved one at a time. And then we kind of dug into the hill a little bit. I ordered the gabions from Gabion com and you, they help you figure out how many and the design and all and they have different gauge of the netting and then we added the top so there's somewhere to sit and then the mosaic is the neighbor's roof tile they had a roofer there and i saw this huge pile of tile it looked like they were going to throw it out and they gave it all to me and we ran it through the toss saw at two and a half inches and we did buy some of these rocks these colored rocks a mandala well it looks very indian to me when yeah. i was doing it very southeast or southern asia aloe um hercules will fill this whole space. I mean, uh -huh. that, that wants to go to 30 feet and they're usually fast. And then the hill, we cleared it all. This is mostly African on this hill, a lot of leucospermums. And uh, I wanted an aloe garden. Even though I have a lot of aloes, I wanted a specific aloe garden. And I've got ones that bloom different times of the year, so I would like to have aloes and bloom here all year. 
and this is still filling in. Everything here is less than two years old. The fencing is um, from Home Depot. It's made out of recycled bottles. I bolted them together to hide the chain link. I divert the water in the street into our drain in the driveway with a bag of dirt. And then that comes out on our house side over here. And then I put perforated hoses down into the canyon. So out of a one inch rain, I can get a five inch rain in the canyon to get water into the hill. And that replenishes the water under the soil. What of your travels have influenced your garden choices? About the only one that I could say had a big influence was the uh, Garden Exotique at Ez, which is on a very steep hill over the Mediterranean. Monaco? It's right next to Monaco. That showed me you can grow anything on a steep hill if you work at it hard enough, because that's way steeper than our hill. Um, Australia definitely influenced me. This whole part from here over in the lower part is almost entirely Australian plants. Australians are fast and there's a ton of grevilleas in there, but a lot of other interesting things. And most of those are going to go to 30 feet. So the idea is to get shrubbery uh -huh. up and cover the hotel. Um, and they're all big grevilleas. Most people don't grow because they get too big for gardens, uh -huh. but I can, I've got space You can it. do it. Um, I wanted cactus. I don't have enough sun anywhere to grow cactus except for right there. Those Italian cypress, are they? That's ours. So you said there's a hundred foot difference in elevation from the top where the house is? To the fence. Beer, those were the beer bottles. They're too small for a retaining thing like that. So these bottles are going to go in there. And then the blue bottles are going to come up here, <laughs> the small ones, to make this wall keep going. And then the mosaic is going to continue over there. Well, the next thing is pulling those out. Then these are going to go in this way where those are. And I don't know if there's a rock down there. That's why the hand spade. Because I'm looking for rocks. Because if you hit a rock or a root, well, we'll see. It didn't go very far. So then you put the bottle like that, and I just eyeball it. I don't have gloves on or glasses, which you should. And that's not going anywhere. Well, we'll actually bring the dirt here and level this. And then we'll continue the mosaic from over there. What we're going to do here is a fractal, a fern, you know, a curved fern frond when it's opening. Really? That's called a fractal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to try. Mm -hmm.